Hi there, welcome to my channel where I take you on tours of unique homes and showcase stories of people living alternatively. Today, we're traveling to Colorado to meet up with a family who took a retired fire truck and turned it into their off-grid tiny home. With massive off-road tires, creative space-saving hacks, and a truckload of fun, this overlander is ready to go just about anywhere. So stick around because this is an episode you're not gonna wanna miss. And if you like unique home tours, make sure that you subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you know every single time we publish a new video. Susan. Hi, I'm Jasper, and these are our daughters Isa and Eva, and we drive in the world in our truck, Rosie. So before the travel, we lived in Thailand for three and a half years. In Thailand, I worked for Coke Industries. When I had give birth to my second one, uh, we wanted to do something different and we needed to make a new plan. We wanted to see more of the world. We felt like with the ages that the girls are now, this is, this is the best timing. For this travel, I, I quit my job. That was a conscious decision not to go for a, a how to say that, for a remote job or to, uh, to make money on the way, even though, yeah, it is, uh, it takes a chunk out of, out of our savings. It's a conscious decision to say, right now we do this without work, therefore we can both fully experience the, the travel without being distracted by work. And have all the attention for the girls right now. They grow up so fast, so that's, uh, that makes it also a beautiful thing. So we bought the truck in Berlin from a dealer where she was still a full fire truck, red lights on top, everything you can, you can imagine. From there we had a chip to, to the Netherlands where somebody did the conversion for us. I think the initial idea was that it would take about a year. We took delivery of it in January of 2023. So it's a Mercedes 1113. It's got a straight six turbo diesel, 5.6 liter. Originally only 170 horsepower, we helped her a little bit, so this one's got about 200 on a good day. So standard, the truck comes with four-wheel drive. It's got high and low gearing and uh, middle and rear diff lockers. And that in combination with, uh, with the bigger wheels and tires makes it quite capable off-road. We got 700 watts of solar on the, on the roof. At the moment, we got two AGM batteries, 220 amp hours each. Which is a little bit low, so we're, we're really contemplating upgrading to, uh, to lithium, uh, lithium batteries. We store about 70 gallons of fresh water and about 15 gallons of grey water. We upgraded the wheels and tires. It originally came with dualies in the back, uh, but this has uh, normal semi-truck tires. We measured them just now. They stand about 42 inches tall. Nice little detail, it still has the original searchlight here. We asked the artist that painted the truck for us to make that really stand out, so it's got purple ghost flames. So the cab used to be crew cab. That means that it was about three feet longer. It could sit eight firemen in, in full equipment. Right here we have our propane tank. The original box was with roller shutters that came with the ladders and with, the, with all, the, all the fire equipment. The box is, uh, is purpose-built for this truck. It's an aluminum frame with uh, composite fiberglass uh, panels inserted. The box is 4.3 meters long and 2.5 meters wide. And I believe it's 2.2 meters high. We kind of wanted to have a folding staircase that, that goes onto the chassis, but unfortunately because of the wheelbase and the alignment of the box, it just didn't happen. But I think we have a good solution here where the staircase goes on top of that storage box right there. Being Dutch, of course, we, we brought our bicycles uh, with us. So we got a bike lift here that this drops down to about here. So it's a little bit easier to, uh, to take the bicycles, uh, bicycles off. So here inside the truck, five speed manual, dog leg. So just like a race car, 
apart from the speed. We've got four cameras that, uh, that give us a surround view of the, of the truck, which are very useful because there is not much visibility otherwise. The mirrors are very small. You know, the truck was designed in the 1950s. The first one came out late 50s. So the ergonomics definitely show that. Here in the back where the kids are, this sofa also acts kind of as a spare bed for when we have a visitor. And of course, there's, there's loads of storage below that as well. Now I'm gonna show you guys the inside. Come in. So this is our kitchen. We have an oven on propane. I cooked up with three burners. Of course, our coffee machine. The sink we, we bought actually in Thailand. We collected some stuff from Thailand for our van because we were not able to leave the country when we bought the van. We have plenty of storage, yeah. We have enough storage for the four of us to keep all our things. This is where the girl sleeps. They have their own little closets inside where they can do the toys in and the clothes. They have their own lights, their own windows. Your own door. <laughs> and we have one more. <laughs> So we homeschooled the, our eldest daughter, Isa. We have a whole curriculum that we buy from a school in the Netherlands. And we follow that curriculum five days a week. And that is like 30, 45 minutes. And it really zooms in on language, reading, writing, and, and math. Yeah, she connects easy to, to a wide, wide variety of people. And, and the language, of course, helps a lot. So if it widens her world uh, uh, yeah. by quite a lot. This is uh, our toilet slash shower. We uh, need to empty once a week, I think. Like I said, that's Jasper's, uh, Jasper's job. This is our pantry. We have all the groceries over here. Our fridge. This is actually our clothes um, storage from Jasper and me. We don't have so much storage, but it's just enough. Everything that we don't need is on the roof, in the boxes. Uh, this we change like summer or winter clothes. We wanted to have like a, like a big couch when the kids are in bed, that we have something nice to sit down and having a, watching a movie or reading a book. Who we need to fold in for having our bed down. Everything is electric, the bed comes down electric. The plan is to drive um, the Pan Americana Highway. We gave ourselves a time frame of, let's say, roughly three years. But what we're also finding driving down is that most of the time we don't know where we're going to be the week after. Rule number one is we all need to have fun. We all need to feel like this is what we want to do. It's no competition. Exactly, yeah. We do this only for ourselves, right? So there's, there's no... There's nobody with a finish flag at, at, at Argentina saying you've made it, right? So if we're halfway we think, you know what, we're gonna, we want to do something else, then we're going to do something else. And it's possible with us because we're changing very quickly. Like after a few years, there will be something else popping up for just... Uh... Yeah, there will be a plan at some point that will, that will come up for, for what happens after this. Because yep. we, we cannot do this forever. No. It's great now, but, but there will come a time that we that we'll want to do something else. And I'm sure that will it will come to us when the time is ready. Yeah. Thanks for watching this week's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please make sure to like, share, and subscribe. And I will see you soon with another unique home tour.